right, so you just took your co-pilot flight. How do you feel? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, it was so fun. Jason's so good. He's just such a good teacher. He let me taxi down the runway and we took the plane off. He let me do the controls while we were in the air. You're flying. Great job. Oh my gosh. My hands are right here. <laughs> Everybody's out looking at you, by the way. Yay! Let's give him a little wing rock. <laughs> and here we go. You're flying. Oh Keep flying gosh. us on out. You're doing fantastic. It was so fun. I feel so good. <laughs> Just excited. Well, my name's Chris Stater. My wife, Cindy, and I are from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we found out about the contest just through Jason and listening on a Tuesday afternoon one week, and we had decided that, yeah, let's enter that contest at the last minute up on top of a mountain in Colorado as we were visiting our son, and it was just a, one of those serendipitous moments where you can get up and speak your heart and or one take wonders. We did it all in one take and submitted and thankfully we won. And what are you most excited about? Just learning it and being in it together. I mean, being on the journey, you know, it, it'll be fun. We can plan our next trip and help each other out and he can count on me, trust me a little more as far as what I need to do because I know what I'll be doing. So it's just fun to be in it together. So flying with the Staters was absolutely awesome. They have the coolest little Dakota. When you first look at the airplane, you see the avionics in it are just truly, truly uh, decked out. They put so much love into it. So we had that instant rapport and connection because we both took old airplanes and really kind of made them this cool Frankenstein into uh, um, something more modern, like a 20, uh, 22 type airplane. It was fun for me because you know I never fly in the left seat. So it was one of the first times I got to sit in the left seat. There I am, left seat, new to me airplane, and Cindy's in the right seat, and Chris, and you probably can't tell from the video, but Chris is six foot eight. He makes me even look small. I was thoroughly enjoying sitting in the back watching Cindy <laughs> manipulate the controls and taking correction from Jason, because when I try and do that, it doesn't go so well. But she um, handled the plane with deafness. I mean, it wasn't, she never overcorrected anything. She has, is a natural, and Jason told her that. He said, you, you, not to placate her, but just to say, look, you have a natural ability. So we'll see where that goes. All right, let's go east just for a second, just to be smart. Okay, so it doesn't look like a technical. Yeah, a little bit, a little high wing twin. Yep. All right, good job. Oh, you lowered that nose on yeah, instinct. I yeah, I, I, I think, yes, you want to boost your seat, but that's a good, good practice. If I can't see, Perfect. my nose is too high. Right. And if I can see too much ground, that's a problem too. That's a problem. <laughs> I don't want that. That's great. That's great. You're doing fantastic here. Fun. It is fun. Well, fun with somebody else helping me with all the controls and everything, but I don't, don't want to do it on my own. <laughs> I hear ya. Got a little bit of a nose up, so let's push that nose no, forward. Just, yeah, just baby, baby, baby movements. I mean, you should be able to fly this thing with two fingers if you wanted to. Okay. We entered under the category of co-pilot training. So Cindy, who is not a pilot, is totally resistant to taking the controls of the airplane and training her on how to assist on you know frequencies and putting them into the radio and to help out in the cockpit as much as possible. And I'm gonna make sure that if something happens to him, then I know what do I do if something happens? How can I help out? So that was just really important to me that I get that kind of training so I know what to do, so. I had been out of aviation since 1998 when our daughter was born. You know, life gets in the way. Everybody says that. Life gets in the way, and it really does, uh, when it's a hobby. It, it's not a vocation for me. Um, 
and when I decided in 2018 I'm a goal setter by nature and I said this is the year I'm going to get back into aviation. And I approached it as if I had never gotten my private pilot license. So I wanted to go through ground school again and just through internet searches stumbled upon Jason Shepard and M0A. Um, took a look and said hey this is something I think will help me get through and uh, allow me to achieve my goals of becoming current again. Uh, signed up to do the private pilot ground school all over again because things had changed in the 20 odd years between uh, when I last flew and the style that Jason presents in it, it's right up my alley. It is you know, hands-on, very knowledgeable and doesn't teach to test. It teaches to practical skills as a pilot that you'll need and I appreciated that. Chris was so generous to take really all the winners around and show his airplane in pre-fly. There are some nuances. Some of these are just purely Cessna pilots. When you ask them on the tail, hey, what's this thing? They say, that's the elevator. No, that's a stabilator. Some just some different vernacular. So everyone learned a lot. We learned a lot about the no step on flaps. You fly a high wing airplane, you see no step plaque already like, what does that mean? And really sitting on the ground is where we spent the most time with Cindy, with the basics. And I had to even take a step back with those student pilot eyes. I said, Cindy, one thing you can really help with is taking out the chocks. And she looked at me and said, well, but what are the chocks? I said, we've got to take this back. And really, again, you have to have those student pilot eyes sometimes. As a flight instructor, or even as a pilot, you think everybody just knows what a chalk is, but that's a weird word, right? No one knows what a chalk is. So we showed her how to tie down. And the honest truth, I asked everybody, Show of hands, who doesn't know how to tie down an airplane? You'd be amazed at the commercial pilots standing there that raised their hands that didn't know how to tie down an airplane. And I was one of those. So these are just some neat things everybody got a chance to learn. So Cindy learned how to tie down the airplane, really helped Chris be a great co-pilot during the pre-flight. Okay, so this is gonna sound funny, but I'm most nervous about even talking on the radio. It's very intimidating to me to talk on the radio. He does a really good job at it, but first time he had me do it on our way here when we came here I was really nervous about talking on the radio um, and then I guess if Jason says okay take over take the controls I'm really nervous about that but I know that he's gonna be right there with me so I'll be fine so I would say those two things are really the most intimidating to me right now so we worked on taxiing and we worked on braking as well so in the event Chris lost his brakes we had to do a few little emergency stops while taxiing so she could practice that uh, what if I, what if uh, like a coyote runs out in front of us, we need to come to a stop. Could you stop me real quick? Oh. Uh, remember the toes? Good, exactly. That's Perfect. good to know. All right, let's keep going forward. Okay. Good job. And these are the things that go beyond a checklist, beyond um, really anything you would learn in a pinch hitter course. That's why I really call it a co-pilot course, because how can we work together um, as a team in the cockpit is really what we're trying to create with Chris and Cindy, and they just did such a great job. Okay. So, now we're back to the checklist. Okay. So it's called the run-up so checklist, and that's where we're going to go. Okay, okay. Uh, seats and belts. Okay, again, good. just checking again. Mine's good? Yep. Mine's good. All right, great. Door and window closed. Shutting. I, I'm a fan of leaving it open. I don't know. Uh, Until fine. we're ready. Yeah. AC off. Yeah, it's yeah. Off. Okay. Flight instruments. Okay, so flight instruments set. So we can do some cross checks here. I'm on a south heading. I'm showing south here, 3007, so we're at basically the ocean, so sea level, sea mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. Everything looks good. Okay. I don't know what all this is. Yeah, it's the attitude indicator, altimeter, vertical speed, based all the stuff we're kind of peeking out here. Okay. It looks good. So um, previously, Chris would always have the, um, the checklist, and he would go through the checklist himself. I mean, I did some things, but he pretty much did it all and Jason had me call out each thing, and then he would show me each thing about what to do. Primer locked. Primer is in and locked. We should, can't pull it out. Okay, prop full forward. Remember that's our blue knob, it is full forward. Okay. Mixture rich. We're gonna push it all the way forward. Great. Fuel pump on. Would you mind getting the fuel pump for me? Uh, where's the fuel pump? Oh, right, right. Fuel pump, yeah. Good job. Okay, 2,000 RPM. Okay, so I'm going to bring the throttle up until I get to 2,000 RPM. And so I, duh, I could be calling out the checklist and then helping him go through that process. And then I would say whatever we need to do, he would repeat it, he would check it, and then sometimes I would take care, turn the nut, turn something off or turn it on. But I know now that I can do that. 
Whereas before I was really nervous about doing that because I didn't want to make a mistake. Um, but it's pretty easy, you just go down the checklist. So it was good. So I know now that I can do all of those things, which will help him. So it's a team effort. Now I feel it's more of a team. Before it was like solo, but now it's a team, right? Yeah, for sure. Great. And then fuel pump off. Oh, okay, gotcha, fuel pump off there. And then emergency procedures. All right, so in the event we have an engine failure on takeoff or anything happens, I'll fly the airplane. I'll also be our communicator as well, and we'll land straight ahead on the runway. If we're uh, above 1,000 feet, we'll attempt to turn back. If we're below 1,000 feet, we're going straight ahead. All right. Uh, All set there. Take off. Landing light on. Landing light is on. Transalt. Transponder is on. It goes out to its own nowadays. Yeah. Okay, fuel pump on. Would you mind getting the fuel pump for me again, please? Fuel pump on. Great. Uh, mixture rich. Confirm rich, it is. Okay, timer start. Yeah, I imagine that's probably already started a timer in the background for us. Okay. Before you close, All right. you pop us here up. Are we ready? Yep, could you switch me over to tower frequency, please? How do I do that? So remember you loaded it in standby? Oh, I got a transfer. Yep, and Thank you, you. Just, you just flip it. So I'll let you get your door. Are you good on how to get the door? Uh, yeah. That one down probably first, then that guy? Got good it. job, muscles. I'll leave this until the last second, and then we'll go, because there's possibly a wait. When we first got here and Jason said, oh, yeah, we're going up. Yeah, you're going to fly. I'm like, oh my God, nobody said I was gonna fly a plane. I knew I was gonna help, but I had no idea. So sure enough, we got out on the runway and he said, okay, you're gonna take us off. And I'm like, oh my gosh, but it was so fun. You know, it's one of those things where you're like nervous about it, but you're so excited that you actually did it. And so, yeah, it was so fun. It was a lot of fun to watch her. Afternoon Tower, Dakota 726, Bravo Bravo, Delta 1, 5, ready for VFR South. Set of 726 Bravo, Bravo Naples uh, Tower, runway 5 at Delta 1, clear for takeoff, turn right on course. 5 Delta 1, clear for takeoff, right turn course. Thank you, 726 Bravo Bravo. All right, so I'm going to let you put both hands on the yoke. Okay. I'll let you, let you make that exception. I'll work the pedals. I'll work the throttles for now. So just make sure your heels are on the floor, your toes are to the bottom of the pedals, exactly how they are. That's great. I'll get our storm window. You're good, don't drive it like a car. <laughs> All right, both hands on the yoke, you're fine. Okay. We're gonna smoothly apply full power. All right, airspeed's alive. We're still steering with our feet, oddly enough. A little bit longer. I'll tell you when, I'll tell you when. Baby that yoke on back, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Good, let's push it forward just a hair because we're heavy. Hold it right about here. You're flying. Great job. Oh my gosh. My hands are right here. <laughs> Everybody's out looking at you, by the way. Yay! Let's give them a little wing rock. <laughs> and here we go. You're flying. Oh Keep flying gosh. us on out. You're doing fantastic. one thing that I have to get, I have to get a booster seat because I cannot see uh, over the, the front the of the cow. plane. Yeah. I can't see the ground because Jason kept asking, can you see the ground? Uh, no. So I need to get a booster seat. And apparently they make booster seats, so it's going to be really good. So it's another thing we're going to do when we get home. Yeah, had I known, we already <laughs> have one. <laughs> You're awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're doing so, so good. I think I need a booster seat. Yeah, that is accurate. They make comfy ones. <laughs> yeah. We're at 700 feet. I'd like you to give me a right turn that away, like towards that road out there. Don't even worry about heading. It's just and towards. I'm using my pedals, right? A, a, a little bit of aileron, a little bit of yoke, and a little bit of pedal. Now, not that much. We're not a blue angel. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to show off and show Chris what a good pilot you are. <laughs> but let's go around here a little bit. We got some clouds we're going to watch for. We're going to negotiate through the around this guy here. Okay. Why don't you go right towards that bend in the road? Good. I mean, Chris is going to be jealous how good you're doing here. <laughs> I am. <laughs> we're going to watch these little clouds here, because okay. we're technically VFR, so okay. just take me through this little gap in the clouds here. Okay. Now you're like a Red Bull Air Race pilot where they fly through the pylons, so that's what I want. <laughs> okay. You're awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you're doing so, so good. 
The coolest part about it was she flew the airplane just so great. I mean, she was rock solid on everything, on headings, on altitudes. You can tell somebody who has a real like natural gift for it. Some people want to overbank or aren't so sure of it, uh, but she had such a great natural ability. Coordinated turns came very easily for her, and that was a lot of fun. Right there, perfect. Hey. You got great finesse. You know, in the military, they like to hire ladies as snipers because they have oh, the really? best finesse and a steady hand. You're doing a great job. You're living proof of that so far. And then in the airplane, it was the basic programming. It was the frequencies. It was the autopilot level button. Put it into heading mode. How to make a mayday call in the event that something would actually happen. Now let's talk about if something were to happen, right? Something happens to Chris, something, we just need some time to figure these sort of things out. Chris talks about this blue level button. Yeah, we got I want you to go ahead, we're flying along, and just push that blue level button real quick. Delta 5 is able, contact ground point check. And let go. Thank you, sir. Put your feet even flat on the floor. Okay. That just engaged the autopilot. Okay. And what it did is we are wings level. It's just going to hold this heading. It's going to hold this altitude. It's not going to do anything else. Okay. It's just going to hold all of this. Now, if we needed to navigate somewhere else, we could hit, remember how I showed you this heading bug here? Yes. We could turn it to heading mode and watch what happens. It's going to go to that 120 heading, just like we were asking it to. Honestly, you couldn't even tell that this was Cindy's first official lesson. We went down south to Marco Island, and I always try to get people comfortable. So I said, hey, let's look at for the nice houses. Let's look for the golf courses and get them doing things. So let's go, um, let's go check out some of these beaches, but I want you to enjoy it. So give me a little bit of a left turn to about south again. Let's pick out some golf courses and beaches you guys can come check out while you're down here. Let's do it. To further your LPGA career. <laughs> you're doing so, so good. She had such a natural ability in her flying that she's looking outside the golf courses. And now we're doing turns around the golf courses and turns around the beach. And they don't even realize we're working in flight maneuvers and they think they're sightseeing. But they're doing such a good job in the entire process. She was, just has such a natural ability in the airplane. You're doing great. Now, give me a right turn directly. Let's fly right over Marco Island. Okay. A little bit of right pedal. A little bit of aileron. Good. That's a big turn, Miss Blue Angel Pilot. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. I I'm all about it. I just want to make sure you don't scare yourself. <laughs> I'm good. I was really nervous, but Jason just kept saying, I'm right here. I'm right here. Don't worry. I'm right here. You're good. Just very positive and encouraging. Now, there will come a time when you still have to land the airplane yeah. and uh, disconnect it and everything else. Yeah. So why don't you put one hand on the yoke ready to fly okay. and this hand push the autopilot button and it's going to disconnect the autopilot, so be ready. Okay. Yep, so push it. All right. You're flying the airplane now. Okay. Just so you are aware. All That's right. what that little noise is to let you know. So let's practice that again one more time. I'm not feeling so well. Uh, what do we do here? Let's go blue level button. We call up ATC, and I would literally say, hey, mayday, mayday, mayday. This is 726 Bravo Bravo. I've got an emergency. Um, I, I need, I need uh, a heading to the nearest airport, please. And they're going to say 726 Bravo Bravo. Turn right heading 330. So you'll go heading mode, push the heading button, and crank that thing to a 330. Hit a 43, uh, turn Perfect. right at... Uh turn on to 1-4, contact ground right away on point 6. Okay, so we're going to do exactly just that. We're going to start heading towards the nearest airport, which is Naples. It was a lot of fun having Chris in the back seat as well. Not only was he a great resource as well, but we had Chris running checklists for us too to help out. Fuel pump on here, we're doing this here, this speed here. That was so helpful. But I think it gave Chris an interesting perspective to see how he can work with his wife uh, in the cockpit to make those frequency changes, make those GPS updates, get the autopilot on a lot of these things, and then do the check and response of the checklist. She says flaps, he says flaps. She says fuel pump on, he confirms fuel pump on. CRM, working as a team. CRM is crew resource management. And just because Cindy doesn't have a certificate, 
doesn't mean she's not a valuable crew member. Anybody sitting there can help you look for traffic, be outside, listen for the radio calls, help with the basic things on pre-flight, help with flip-flopping frequencies and programming frequencies. All those sort of things can really help in the task management, especially Chris is doing some long IFR flights and the workload begins to increase more and more and just having somebody take the workload from you. One of the key things I showed Cindy was, hey, when we're on this two mile final, go find the ground frequency and get ground ready. So as soon as he touched down, they say contact ground point six, Cindy's got it there and she's making the flip flop for him. You're not fumbling around with the taxiway diagram going, okay, ground point six, okay, and you're trying to get that, it's already done. We're always thinking ahead of the airplane and having a spouse, a friend, whomever it is there to help you really can serve you in the cockpit. So you got ground and it's in standby, that's great. Do you see those? four lights yes. to the right, Yes. those are called the pappy lights. When there's two red, like no, there is now, and two white, that means you're on glide path. Okay. If I see white, all white, I'm out of sight. Okay. Too high. All red, I say you're dead. I don't like that analogy. Okay. You're too low. Okay. We're right on glide path right now. Okay. Chris, I'm going next notch of flaps at 97. Is that okay? Perfect. See how I just got an extra little white light now? Yeah. I'm all white lights now, I'm too high. Or Duffo. And tower citation, Niner Niner Eight Golf Bravo is over Duffo. Niner Eight Golf Bravo, Roger. Number two phone traffic, short final, runway five clear lane. We're looking right, good. For the so you notice we're putting that center line, line of that runway, kind of like on that same shoulder you put for the, um, the taxi. Uh-huh. Happy with speed, Chris? 80? 80. I'm coming into the air fast just to be safe. Figured more speed yep. is better than less. And yeah, I saw that pull over. 56. Oh, we got a room to spare. All right. I see that bird too. Let's see yeah. how I land in the left seat, Chris. Oh, that's right. New, You're a right seater. In a, new, in a new airplane. Eyes down that runway. We'll just hold it here. Hold it here. Oopsies. There she goes. Not as pretty as Chris is landing. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Bravo, where do you park today? We're going back to Rex Air, so if we could grab Bravo, that'd be great. Six Bravo, Bravo, turn left at Bravo and taxi to Rex Air via Bravo. Just stay my frequency, keep it moving today. We'll keep her moving with you, Bravo, all the way in. Full aerodynamic braking. Two, three, Mike Zulu sitting there. Oh, yeah. Like, getting ready to taxi over. All right. Not as pretty as Chris is landing, but. That's yeah. fun. All Very right. helpful. Yes, I hope so. You want to taxi it in the rest of the way here with me? Your taxiing skills gotten better since our first taxi. <laughs> said just to stay with him, so we didn't need. We, we queued up ground. We were already for him. He said, "No, oh, just stay on my frequency." He wasn't too worried about it. Okay. That happens from time to time. Okay. But either way, we were we were ready for either option. We're gonna go in the second entrance. Okay. And we're gonna make it real easy. We're just gonna go straight ahead. Okay. And we'll manipulate it by hand from there. Okay. I'm gonna let you do that. Okay. I got it. Okay. Will you watch that right wing tip for me? Yep. You're good. You know, our expectation of what Cindy would do in the airplane was much lower. Like, okay, we'll get off the ground and then we'll get out a little ways and then maybe she'll manipulate the controls a little bit. No, she actually took the plane off, rotated, got in the air, and basically from the moment that we were, were barreling down that runway, she was in control, you know, with Jason shadowing. but. At most of the time, he hands in the lab. So you should be proud of yourself. I'm so proud. And I bet this video from the previous video should be a <laughs> big difference. Because I was a little nervous on that first video, but I'm, I'm just so excited. I'm thrilled. You get out of it what you put into it. You absolutely uh, need to focus on what it is that you're uh, looking to achieve. What are your goals in aviation? Maybe in retirement, I'd like to be a CFI at some point, but I know that with the team at M0A, I can rest assured that I'll have the proper training to do that and to pass along a legacy of aviation. It's just important that it's a team effort, and it's more fun when you're involved in it together, and it makes it more fun. So that's my definite takeaway from this whole thing, that now I know I can do it. So that's good. Yep, yeah. awesome.
Good job. I have bad news. Your engine has quit again. 